Good morning, everybody. This is Joey with Bedbug Solutions. We're in North Georgia today doing a heat remediation treatment, and I just want to walk you through um, our process from start uh, to finish with the setup so that you can have an idea on what uh, type of service you'll be getting when you hire uh, Georgia Bedbug Solutions or Florida Bedbug Solutions for your heat remediation treatment. First, we'll start here in the, uh, in the trailer. So we're going to be doing a big home today, five bedrooms in total. Uh, so we're going to be using our propane heater. So we're going to be running, if you can look inside the trailer here, we have 200 gallon propane tanks. Um, so we're going to be running that through our regulator um, into the home, if you follow me this way. To our Titan uh, bed bug heater, this bed bug heater is a 999,000 BTU heater. It's capable of heating up to 5,000 square foot. Um, and so it's gonna be going through another regulator in the system to make sure that if anything faults here, it'll also have another fail safe at the propane tanks, basically making it extremely safe for heat remediation treatments. We're gonna be running a splitter um, we're going to be running fans to evenly distribute the heat and then we're going to be running our 18 inch duct work, wireless sensors and the such. Um, so what we'll do first is uh, go ahead and get our fans in place. And so uh, if you follow me, we'll start that. Another important thing um, when doing heat remediation treatments is to make sure we give you a checklist, uh, make sure all of your electronics are unplugged. They're gonna be safe um, to be in the unit or in the home, but we like to just make sure they're unplugged because we prefer to be uh, safe than sorry. But another thing that we do is um, open up any type of furniture that we can, lift mattresses off of box springs or bedding to make sure that we're able to get even a uh, flow of heat throughout the home. Also, we're gonna crack open your dresser drawers um, to make sure that the heat's able to penetrate those areas as well. If you look here, we've already laid out um, part of our 18 inch ducking and we have our um, two bedrooms here with the bathroom um, and closet area. But what we have is a long hallway, if you will, going through an office space um, to a bedroom on the other side of the home. And so this is where our duct work really comes into play because we're able to manipulate the heat, if you will, to get it into different parts of the homes when we want it and the such. So what we're gonna be doing is splitting it here to get these two rooms heated up with the, with the fans. And then I'm gonna be running this ductwork all the way down and I'm gonna be drawing it with this fan to make sure that it's evenly distributed throughout the home. All right, so now whenever we get this set up, the heat's gonna naturally wanna go out of the first exit, um, which is where the split's gonna be, but then we wouldn't be getting as much heat on this side of the home. So having this fan, and I'm gonna turn it to the full, um, you know, to its max potential, it's going to suck the heat through here and kind of make it evenly distributed so that we're not having more heat on the right side of the home versus the left side of the home. Another thing that we're gonna do in order to make sure that we're not getting our return to basically draw the heat down the stairwell. Uh, we're gonna be running our return through the home and more so on this side of the house. You'll see what I'm talking about in just a minute because we're gonna walk through this bedroom here and go down into the living room. And we get real fortunate sometimes where we don't have to raise a mattress because uh, it doesn't have a box spring or it has um, a type of uh, bed frame to where the heat can get underneath it very well on top of it both sides. So this mattress, we really didn't have to do anything to. It was prepared for us, but of course we got our dressers open. Um, the guitar case you can see back there, we did remove that guitar. It's a stringed instrument and that's one of the things we asked to be removed um, on the checklist that we provide you before treatment. All right, so here we have a living room. Um, this is gonna be, um, you know, this is where the, there's definitely a bed bug infestation in this part of the home as well. But we also have a, um, a chimney, a fireplace here, which can draw a lot of our heat out. So one of the things we're gonna do here in just a minute is cover that up with a, a thermal blanket to make. All right, so first things, we'll go ahead and start with a splitter. All right, so at this point, we're gonna have a cluster of heat happening in this area because obviously this is gonna be our first exit. We are drawing through the ductwork here, but we have two rooms that we need to hit. So in this compact area, I could not run a hose, split it again. There's not much of an option here for me. So what I'm gonna do is um, turn that fan on low 
turn that fan on high because the heat's going to naturally go towards that fan unless I have some sort of a draw that's going to impact that directional flow. So the fan going to this side is going to be on high. Fan going this way is going to be on low. And then we're going to have our fan down the hallway on max to try to get as much heat pulled down that way as we can. All right, so we have our connection there. Now we're going to have a whole lot more um, duct working than we're going to need to run uh, to our machine that we have right outside the uh, front door here. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and connect it and then we're going to bunch up uh, the ductwork that we have with one of our clips to make it, you know, fit as needed. All right, so we have our first um, connection set up. Um, now what we were going to do is do a return. And so uh, right now we're in North Georgia. Summer times, you don't typically need to do a return, um, but uh, when you're dealing with a two-story home, it also helps with um, to, get, to manipulate the heat. And so that's what we're going to be using it for this time. And what will happen is when we start heating the home up, um, let's say we have it at the end of our duct working, it's coming out at 100 and 50 degrees that's a great temperature um, to start at and i'll slowly get the home raising but then it's going to circulate that 150 degrees through our heater re-energize it and so it'll come out 150 circulate through come out 155 and we're able to get uh, more sustained temperatures um, a little bit faster with a little bit less propane use and um, ultimately it helps with a better treatment um, so but as i was saying earlier when we were coming down the bedroom on the left side of the home is we're going to be running our duct work down this hallway here um, and then to the machine so that we can draw that heat through the living room area back to the machine and we're going to have a full circulation um, going through this this property And then we're going to go ahead and um, place our uh, wireless sensors throughout the home. And so I'll step up through this. It's going to be a little bit of a tight fit. Okay, so what we do is we'll start um, with our wireless router. And so what we have um, is a temperature gateway, if you will, It'll create a hot spot so that we're able to communicate with the home. Um, from the truck. Obviously we're going to be going to pretty hot temperatures, uh, 140, 150 degrees. Um, and so we don't want to be in here that whole time. Um, so this allows us to be able to monitor the home. Yep. All, right. All right. So now we have that running. I'll just set it right here by the window and uh, be able to communicate there. Then we have our wireless sensors. And so um, what we're gonna do is um, set these up throughout the home. So uh, again, we can monitor everything without having to necessarily go up the stairs, go into the living room. And um, we do still do that, uh, but we just don't have to do it as regularly. Um, and so I'll go ahead and turn all of these on. And, um, and here we go. Okay, so there we go. Now we have our sensors in place. Uh, next step we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna cover up this fireplace, uh, make sure that we're not losing any hot air that we're gonna need uh, to kill the bed bugs with. You almost have to be part ninja. So now we have uh, the fireplace um, sealed off. We have our living room. You see we kind of tossed the couch cushions. It looks like it's been ransacked, but that's 
That's just so that we can get even temperature. Basically the key to a successful bed bug treatment is even airflow throughout the home. And so whatever you have to do uh, to get that, because if you have too much of anything on top of each other, it doesn't matter if we go 200 degrees in the home, which you'll start damaging stuff. But um, you know, if, if you have so many things stacked on top of each other, it might be 200 degrees in the air, but you know, it's gonna be at some point throughout that clutter 110 100 degrees that's not going to kill the bugs and they can get into it so uh, that's the really the key um, temperature of course is what kills them but making sure that the temperature gets evenly spread throughout the home is ideal or else you're going to fail with your bed bug heat treatment all right so we have everything set up um, ready to run uh, the only thing left we have to do is um, seal up the front door and then um, we are going to um, get the propane tanks turned on and start this job so we're about to seal up the back door or the front door where we're running all of our heat through so when we do that um, we can go in and out of there but it's it's always nice to find a back door or something that you can um, go in and out of so that we don't have to break that barrier uh, with the front door um, any more than we need to so uh, we got our back door so this is where we're going to be going in and out of from here on out because i'm about to go out uh, to the trailer grab another thermal blanket seal up that front door kick the fans on and we're going to be ready to run This one's gonna go on high. And you may lose audio here for a second. This one's gonna go on low. This one's gonna go on high. All right, so now we have the uh, front door sealed. Um, we have our sensors in place. Um, we're about to get everything going. Um, the only thing that we need to do now is run power um, to our machine, um, get the sensor placed in the front so we know exactly what our output temperature is from the machine. Uh, we monitor temperature coming out right in the front as well as in the rooms, of course. So uh, let's go ahead and get power running. We'll get our sensor in place and then we're gonna get this going. forgot to turn the propane tanks on. Let's do that first so we're not gonna get any heat. So now that we have our temperature um, monitor in place for the front, uh, we're ready to get going. So we'll go ahead and control. We control our propane here through this valve, um, up the temperature, lower the temperature, but it's time to get this heat treatment started. And here we go. Thank you for walking through this video with us today. Hopefully this helps to, um, to help you understand what uh, we do when we're doing a heat remediation treatment. Um, you know, obviously this is a full home. We do anything from small studio apartments, one bedrooms, uh, semi trucks, homes, warehouses, whatever we need, um, you know, we'll determine what type of equipment we bring out. Um, but this is gonna be, if you need a whole home treatment, this is what the setup is typically gonna look like. Uh, we're gonna get our temperature up above 120 degrees, uh, and then we're gonna leave it there um, for three hours to make sure that we get optimal kill. Um, and then uh, we'll do a preventative, liquid preventative treatment, just as, you know, what we like to call icing on the cake. Uh, and also, it's not to kill bed bugs, because we all know that heat is what kills bed bugs. Uh, the liquid preventative is to help prevent reinfestation, which it does great for that. And so let's say that you are going to, um, you know, you work at a school or you work at a hospital, you have that risk of bringing bed bugs in from work. You already spent a lot of money to get your home treated. That's what the liquid treatment's for. Um, so we appreciate you walking through this video with us. Um, we appreciate your time. And uh, if you have any questions, please let us know. Thank you for choosing Bed Bug Solutions and have a great day.